another edition of BNA Football Weekly. This is a weekly podcast. It's around like 50 minutes or so where we go through my best bets of the week. We're one in nine in the past two times I've done this. So it's turning into like a bet the opposite of what I'm saying. But no, we're looking to rebound this week. And we have my uh, NFL team rankings. Uh, the top 15 teams. Who's going to be in my Super Bowl bubble this weekend? Um, so th- th- that's going to be interesting. We also go through my top NFL storylines. All that is great. I haven't recorded any of it, but I have it all prepared and written down, so hopefully it's good. If you listen to this on YouTube and you're like, you know what, I have to go somewhere, I'm on podcast apps anywhere, so just search up BNA Sports and you'll be able to find me anywhere on YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Your Mama's Podcast. That wasn't a funny joke, but um, before it gets any worse and I have to re record this intro, uh, just enjoy this podcast and let's get started. <laughs> All right, and welcome to my power rankings. We're going to start off with my top 15 teams. Go through them just a little bit, talk about them. Uh, not just like the generic stuff, a little bit more detail because I'm pretty sure you guys know every single little, you know, overall thing about teams. So let's begin. Number one, I have the Ravens. Now they're the hottest team in the league. Will they be like that running down the stretch? I don't know. Their defense is getting better. They're ranked like 20th, but in the last five weeks, they're ranked like top three in the league if you look at the stats. Um, obviously, I don't have the stats with me, but, you know, they've they've beaten the Patriots, who aren't that impressive on offense. You know, they've beaten the Bengals, who aren't that impressive on offense, and I think this is going to start catching up to them. But for now, I can't not have them at number one. You know, who are you going to put ahead of them? You know, number two, I have the 49ers. You know, Jimmy G is their ceiling now. You know, some games he acts like a... Um, I remember Dak Prescott a couple years ago when he had like 150, 160 yard games. That sort of quarterback is like, don't lose this game. Kind of like Kirk Cousins in the beginning of the season. And he also has games where it's just like, you know what, we can, he can have 400 to 500 passing yards. And that's good because you know they can win multiple ways. You can have Jimmy G be the hero, but you can also have the defense be the hero, which is a good sign. Now, Kyle Shanahan is going to have to scheme some things up with Jimmy. He's going to have trouble with defenses, with like the Patriots, but. If they're playing the Patriots, that's a good sign because they're in the Super Bowl. And, you know, we'll see how he does against the Saints. Uh, a really good defense with, you know, uh, you have you have Patrick, well, I forget his last name, um, a, a cornerback. You have Marshawn Lattimore who's injured. Eli Apple. You have, you have a bunch of studs on that defensive line too. And we'll see how it works. We'll see how he does against the Saints. That's when I'll really judge this team. Number three, I have the Patriots. What do you want to say? I think that they're going to lose this week to the Cowboys. In fact, I'm going to make a video saying why they're going to lose to the Cowboys. Kind of like I said, how the um, the Ravens will beat the Patriots. I think the Cowboys are going to beat the Patriots this weekend. But the Patriots are still number three right now. You know, offense, they do just enough. They can script one or two drives, get a touchdown drive, get their 17 points, and their defense holds, and they're good. But the only question is... You know, the Ravens, the Texans, the, the you know Kansas City, when players go off script... You know, Pedro sometimes can't contain him. You know, and plus these guys have experience now. You know, they're playing Dak Prescott. He has experience. I'll get more into that later, but I want to move on to number four because it's the Saints. Now they have a, a hard ceiling with Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, uh, with Drew Brees. I think it's lower than the ceiling with uh, Teddy Bridgewater. I, I think that Teddy Bridgewater can take this team to much greater heights than Drew Brees can. I know Drew Brees has more experience, but Teddy Bridgewater is just a better guy. He can throw over the top. Now, is that going to be successful against the 49ers? Is it going to be successful against the Seahawks? Well, do they play? No, they don't play the Seahawks. Sorry. Is it going to be successful against teams with bad, you know, secondaries? And they did play Tampa Bay, and they torched their secondary. But Tampa has one of the worst secondaries in the league. You know, the Green Bay has a better secondary than that. You know, the teams like the Bears, who I think they play, have a better secondary than that. So we'll see. Can Drew Brees throw over the top? Are they going to be able to work in Alvin Kamara if he's healthy into this run game? You know, they got rid of Mark Ingram, and your second real tier running back isn't really as good as Mark Ingram was. So that's going to be very interesting going down the stretch. Can can they have another running back? But I think they can. And number five, I have the uh, Green Bay Packers because, well, it's Aaron Rodgers, again, like the 49ers, they can win multiple ways. They can have their defense be legit. They can have Aaron Rodgers be legit. But... Their inconsistency kind of worries me how, like, the offense can completely disappear at some moments and the defense can look like Swiss cheese. But, you know, uh, I trust this. Aaron Rodgers is an experienced quarterback. He can make some plays still. He's trying to prove everybody wrong. He's motivated this year to prove that, you know, the Mike McCarthy was the problem. So, 
you know, uh, Patton is a good def- good enough defensive coordinator. You know, sometimes he doesn't produce the uh, schemes right enough. But, yeah, I think the Green Bay Packers are number five. Number six, I have to go with the Chiefs because, first of all, who are you going to put ahead of the Chiefs right now? You want to put the Texans ahead of them? You want to put the Colts ahead of them? You want to put the Raiders ahead of the Chiefs, really? And I saw Con Coward had number 10. This defense is going to come into shape. I have a feeling they will. Steve Spagnuolo is a good defensive coordinator. They're going to be better than last year. And you saw with the uh, the Chargers that, you know, the they can cause pressure on the quarterback and make him make mistakes. If they put pressure in Tom Brady's face, you know, he may he may get a little bit rattled and throw some interceptions. That's all you need. And especially the Pagers aren't a good offense either. So what are you going to let up seven more points, which you usually would? And then have Patrick Mahomes a little bit healthy on offense. So I think the Chiefs are in at number six. Number seven, I have to have the Vikings. I'm starting to trust Kirk Cousins more, but my general distrust is still there. Um, he's putting up good stats like he did last year. People forget last year he had amazing stats, like 31 touchdowns, six interceptions, or something like that. And everyone's like, oh, he sucks in primetime. But he won some primetime games. But I just can't have him over the Chiefs because they lost to the Chiefs with Matt Moore at quarterback. So, um, yeah, I, you know, they, they've been the healthiest team this year. And is, is that luck going to continue or is that luck going to uh, stay away? You know, can Kirk Cousins do it if a player gets injured? I don't really trust it. I know everything has to go right. Everything has to be going smoothly. But when things derail, it's like, oh, yeah, ooh. But they have been showing signs. You know, they were losing 20 nothing against the Broncos. They didn't get rattled. They're like, you know, we're a good team. Kirk Cousins is like, let's put, him on, uh, yeah, put this team on my back a little bit. You know, that sort of thing. So we've seen little signs here. Winning in prime time. You know, in the beginning of the season, we're like, oh, it's the same old Vikings. But now, maybe not. So number eight, I have... The, uh, the Seattle Seahawks, I said this defense is going to come up into shape right away. Like the Kansas City Chiefs, this defense is going to come up into shape like they do every single year. Jadavion Clowney is coming off his best game. You have a bunch of um, studs on this defense. You still have K.J. Wright, Bobby Wagner. You still have a lot of those guys. Obviously, you want a better cornerback than Shaquille Griffin, but you did bring in Quandre Diggs. This defense is going to be good enough. Uh, it's just, just wait until January and December comes. I bet you this team... They're going to have a great defensive presence. Russell Wilson's going to be making some plays with his new Josh Gordon. The offensive line is better. Chris Carson's a good running back. So this seems overall good. Number nine, I have the Dallas Cowboys, who um, they, they can, can't can not make my top ten. Um, I think they're going to win this weekend. I really do. Uh, they don't do anything great, but they're a good overall team. Uh, you could say their offense is better than their defense, but... I never really liked their secondary. That's what I... I never really understood their secondary. I get it, Byron Jones and that sort of thing. But I never really understood. I'm like looking at their corners. I'm like, you look at the names. It's like none of them really like surprise me. It's like, oh, they're good. And look at it. They're ranked like 15th or 16th in the league in the secondary. Could be a little bit wrong with that. But, you know, they're, they're not special in the secondary. What they do good is uh, run defense. So, you know, as long as they do that well, control the pace of the game. You know, they, they should be good enough. But that secondary, the best defense in the league are secondary-driven. You know, the Patriots. We call it the, the Bears are good in the secondary. The Ravens, now they have a better secondary. They then their, their story's not the pass rush. Anyway, number 10, debuting in my top 10 is the Raiders. And partially it's because of their easy schedule. And partially because they whooped the Bears. Obviously, they handled their business against Cincinnati. They had a good showing against the Texans, the uh, Green Bay Packers. And they had some impressive wins on their schedule. Now it's their offense, and their defense is going to be the downfall of this team. They they have a hard ceiling because, you know, Tom Brady is just going to keep on rattling off touchdowns and touchdowns against this team. And then uh, Derek Carr is going to be primed for an interception. But, you know, 72% completion percentage. Yeah, you have your your wide receivers are healthy somewhat. You have Hunter Renfro as your uh, tight end. You have a lot of tight ends that are, you know, improving and showing signs of promise. So that's my top 10. The Raiders, I don't think they're going to win the AFC West, but right now would have the Bills and them in a wild card. And speaking about the Bills, I don't have them just yet. I have the Texans coming just behind the, uh, the Oakland Raiders. Now you're probably like, oh, Anthony, it's overreaction. They ran into the buzzsaw that was the Ravens. But this team is really showing signs of problems. Now, uh, I hated them in the beginning of the season. I said they go 5-11 and or 6-10. and I said they have a top-10 draft pick. Obviously, I was wrong about that, unless they lose the rest of their games. But I said, who, who do they have? I'm like, J.J. Watt's always injured. I was right. I'm like, they lost Jadavion Clowney. Who's in their secondary? And their secondary is injured now with um, Will Fuller. I mean, not Will Fuller. You know, a couple of guys that are, are injured on their reserve list, injured reserve list. I checked, you know. They're not talented in the secondary. Deshaun Watson, are you expecting him 
to come up with all these miraculous plays. I'm like, he's good, but I don't think he's that good. And he's exceeded my expectations this year. He's a top three candidate for MVP. May have fallen out there by now, probably top five. But, you know, I'm not sure if the Texans can ride this on uh, Watson. You know, Laramie Tunsil's a little bit rattled up. You know, your first on draft picks, Caleb McGarry. I mean, not Caleb McGarry. Um, who did they bring in? No, the, the, the 23rd pick. Uh, Titus Howard. He has he's been struggling on and off the field. Then obviously Duke Johnson. Um, they're they they're really hurt in the as far as running back goes. And who do you have? DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller. That's all you have on offense. Like they're, they're fast, but is that going to translate to wins running down the stretch? I don't know. They play the Colts tonight for me. Um, I'm expecting them to lose this game. They're at home. They're favored by three and a half points. Uh, the Colts I have at number 13, but before that I have the Bills at number 12. You have a lot of AFC teams here. The Bills aren't turning the ball over, and if they can do that, they'll be fine. Their defense is going to come up into shape. They don't really have names on this defense. They don't. Like If you ask an average NFL fan who doesn't study the NFL or is not a Bills fan, like um, you know who's on the Bills defense, they wouldn't be able to na- uh, give you names. I can't even name a lot of na- uh, guys on this team. I'm not going to start. Because, you know, I'm, I'm recording, I'm doing this on the fly. But, like, the Bills' defense is good. And they can give Josh Allen more time to get the ball. He doesn't turn it over. They, they translate to points. And they had a couple of rough weeks. But, you know, as long as you can get some momentum, that's fine. And then uh, number 13, I have the Colts. Because, well, Jacoby Brissett, i on a lot of a run game here with Marlon Mack. And he's gone. That's going to be a big, it's going to be a big test for him tonight. Again, I think the Colts win. A pretty medium scoring game, like a 24 to 21. Uh, I think they pull it out. But if they can't, all of a sudden you're six and five. And what do you do good at this point? You know, you're just average everywhere. Rocky Sin is uh, banged up in that secondary. You have T.Y. Hilton that's banged up. This team hasn't been able to stay healthy, but still they're six and four. Uh, that re- that loss to Miami is really going to hurt them because they could easily be seven and three right now. And with the win tonight, they take control of this division, but they didn't, and we have to move on. Yeah, the the Colts, they're a decent team. They're they're, they're a decent team. They're they're well rounded. They're well coached. That's why I have to have them up here. Um, number fourteen, uh, you know, some teams are going to be pushed down the list a little bit, and uh, the Eagles have to be here because, well, they don't do anything amazing. Obviously, they have problems with wide receiver depth, but at some point, they had the number two roster in the beginning of the league. And you're telling me the beginning of the league year, the beginning of the year, and you're telling me they got so banged up that now they, they suck and Carson Wentz has to deal with them. Think narrative change in the NFL so fast. At some point, uh, Carson Wentz can, is going to have to make those easy throws because those are gimme throws. That's how, you, that's how you get some momentum. That's how you gain the offense. You know, you, can't, you have to have the base of the cake before you have the icing. You know, uh, Carson Wentz is all the icing. He's, you know, he could throw it deep. He can roll out and... You know, you have to be able to make those easy throws and uh, be able to learn the checkdowns. Patrick Mahomes has done better with that recently. Um, so, yeah, the, um, the Eagles are number 14. They're still in my hierarchy. Again, I'll have asterisks, asterisks next to the, um, the teams that I think could win the Super Bowl right now. I'm slowly taking teams off. I'm slowly taking teams off because it's like, well, they have a, a glaring flaw that I don't think is going to get better. Um, obviously, it may be able to get better. But I'm not too sure about that. So I'm um, rounding out my top 15. I have to sneak the Rams in here um, because pretty much by default, like, what do you want me to include? The Bears, Browns, Steelers, Jaguars, Titans, you know, Panthers, Chargers, Falcons. They, they, they sneak in. I don't think they're, they're in Super Bowl contention. The defense is obviously getting better. And Dominican Sue won uh, Defensive Player of the Week. But do I trust this, this linebacking core? No. Do I trust Ndamukong Sue pretty much doing it all by himself? No. Do I trust this aging o- offensive line? No. I mean, their their wide receivers are great. They're like the Browns of the NFC. They're the exact same thing. They're the exact same thing, just with a better coach. Just with a better coach. They have the premier pass rusher. They have some decent talent in the secondary. You have Jalen Ramsey. You have that one star. And what else does this team do well? The, I don't know. You know, um, I think Sean McVay, my theory is he's going light on Todd Gurley the entire season because he wants him to be healthy running down the stretch. Maybe that happens, and maybe they have a run game to help Jared Goff out, but Sean McVay doesn't trust Jared Goff. He's not much, that much, looking that much better than Mitch Trubisky right now. At least the Bears somewhat trust Mitch Trubisky. 
At least they're like, you know, let's give them reps. But Jared Goff, not really. I mean, he had that one game in the beginning of the season with 50-plus throws. So did Mitch Trubisky. So they're they're in the same boat right now. But the only problem is both teams have horrible cap, no draft picks. And they had a little bit of stunt there. And it's just that the Rams made it to a Super Bowl and the, the Bears didn't. You know, all about moving to L.A., flashy, different things. You have to build it for the long-term future here. You can't have the two years of flash and all of a sudden you go into the new stadium. The Rams... They're probably going to finish third in their division, maybe even fourth. It depends how the Cardinals do don't, going down the stretch. And then you, you have the uh, the Los Angeles Chargers who didn't even make this list. So, yeah, those are my top teams. Again, I have an asterisk next to the team making the Super Bowl bubble. And let's move on to my bottom tier. And my bottom tier, I'm going to start mentioning them less and less. Um, let's, let's begin with number 16. Uh, I have to have the Bears right behind them because they, they beat the, um, the Rams beat the Bears. Then the Browns, they're going to rattle off some wins here. They're going to be kind of interesting. You know, they're, they're probably going to lose one more game that they shouldn't. This would be like, oh, they shouldn't have lost that game. And if we did, if only we beat this team, we would have been in the playoffs. And then we're all going to be like, oh, you know. And then the uh, Browns hype is going to begin next year. The Steelers, Mason Rudolph, hard ceiling. Go after Tua. That's pretty much it. Uh, even though you don't have the first round draft pick, I don't even know. Uh, yeah, that's true. They don't have first round draft pick. So I don't even know what they're going to do at quarterback. Bring Ben Roethlisberger back in, I guess. But they, they have a solid foundation to this team. Maybe draft another offensive lineman to rejuvenate that. And, yeah, they're, they're a solid team. Uh, just they don't have really a really good quarterback. Jaguars, Titans, same boat. And uh, the Lions, you know, the, Matt Stafford could have had an MVP season this year. I truly believe that. I have some money on it. If only his team was able to win during, going down the stretch. If only if Matt Patricia wasn't just a choker at defensive coordinator and it wasn't awful he would have been good and that i have the uh, panthers and Ch- uh, panthers who i said what do they do good I'm like well, well, I-, I never understood the hype of them and yeah the falcons are gradually rising on my list i'm cautiously op- optimistic about them i said at the uh, last week i'm like i'm not gonna move them up unless they start rattling off some wins i'm like i kept them at the exact same it's a fluke win but if they can get some momentum, I mean, momentum is the beauty of the sport. You know, you start feeling good about yourself. Like, you know, our secondary may not be that bad. You know, Dan Quinn may not be a, a bad defensive coach. And then towards the end of the season, you look at some games, they're like, oh, we probably shouldn't have lost it. We probably should have gave Seattle a better run for their money. Probably should have beaten Arizona. If they would have beaten Arizona, they'd be sitting at 4-6. and six. They still have to play, you know, um, the Saints again. And I think they have to play the Buccaneers as well again. So... They can easily be six and six, you know, com- coming down here, and all you have to do is go three and one, and maybe, maybe take the take a wild card. But I don't know. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Rounds it off for all my bad teams. Uh, the the Dolphins are st- they they're, they moved up just a little bit, but they're going to be horrible down the stretch because now they're going to start dealing with injuries. They just may lose the rest of their games. They're probably two and fourteen. The Redskins, they're they're going to get some momentum with Dwayne Haskins, so maybe. Potentially with the run game, if they play teams with bad run defenses, where they play the Giants again, I forget who else they play. Probably play the Eagles and the Cowboys. Those teams have good run defenses. You know, if if those teams, if they can establish the run there, they're going to rattle off some wins. Maybe even get behind the Giants, so the Giants can take Chase Young, uh, Walker Little. I don't even care who you want to pick. Uh, Dylan Moses, and obviously Andrew Thomas, who's my guy. Uh, Dwayne Haskins was my guy at the end of last season, so I don't know what could change. But yeah, let's move on to my next segment. All right, and welcome to my next segment. And this segment is my top storylines, top things I want to talk about. So the first thing I want to talk about is the new rookie quarterbacks. Now, there are a couple new rookie quarterbacks that got drafted. Some of them didn't play, like Drew Locke. Jared Stidham had a little bit of a stint. Um, So we're going to see more about them later, in my opinion. Uh, It's hard to compare. I could say, oh, Drew Locke reminds me a lot of Joe Flacco, or, you know, that's just a random thing I, you know, thought of. But um, we don't really know too much about them, but... You know, quarterbacks like Kyler Murray, Daniel Jones have started 8, 9, 10 games in the league already. And let's do some comps. Um, obviously, Kyler Murray starting off number one pick. I'm not going to compare how they did in college, really, and how they, um, you know, their story. Like, oh, yeah, this person was the first round pick. But Kyler Murray is obviously Russell Wilson. They obviously weren't first round picks. Uh, you know, Kyler Murray was, and Russell Wilson wasn't. But Russell Wilson allowed Kyler Murray to be a number one pick. And that That's pretty obvious now. He... He doesn't turn the ball over, and Russell Wilson did a, has always done a really good job of not turning the ball over. He's uh, just taken what the play gives him, and he can make some miraculous plays where 
you know, he scrambles and he, he, he can run it a lot, but he's looking, he, he runs to throw. And uh, Russell Wilson wasn't really put in a position to succeed when he first got into the NFL. Um, their, their offensive coordinator right now is working for the, uh, the Lions. He is, he's not that good. I mean, the Lions are playing pretty, pretty well, uh, you know, offense. They're Jeff Driscoll had a lot of points, but nobody's expecting this team to be wall beaters on, you know, on offense. Um, yeah, so, you know, Kyler Murray was put in a position to succeed, and that's what the new NFL is. It's trying to bring in a coach and uniting them with a quarterback. You're going to see coaching hires going to be later and later when a quarterback first gets drafted. You know, because, you know, if you're the eighth, eighth pick, you're, you're not really sure who's going to fall to you. Uh, if you're looking for a quarterback. So that's a little bit of a tidbit. So obviously, Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray are a pair. So the number six overall pick, the Giants selected Daniel Jones out of Duke. And at first I was thinking, you know, he remind, kind of reminds me of Jameis Winston. But I'm like, oh no, he's too accurate for that. Um, yeah, he reminds me a lot of Big Ben Roethlisberger. Their, their career arcs in the beginning were kind of the same. You know, from a little bit of a small school, not really a football powerhouse. Um, you know, Daniel Jones had a little bit of a better coach. And Ben Roethlisberger just came in and played pretty much right away. He started 14 games in his uh, rookie year. Uh, well, he, he played in thir- uh, 14 games, started in 13, and that's exactly what uh, Daniel Jones is about to do in his uh, rookie career. Um, yeah, so they're both extremely accurate downfield, could stay in the pocket, deliver a throw. They both have a sneaky good run game. People forget that Ben Roethlisberger was a good runner in the beginning. His rookie year and his you know couple years, he's had... 100 to 200 yards rushing which you know Eli Manning his career only has 500 yards rushing so he's no Eli Manning he's uh he's a runner he could do it way way better and way more than anyone else and obviously Ben Roethlisberger went 13 and 0 uh Daniel Jones is 2 and 6 in his career so far so obviously uh, that's not really working but Daniel Jones looks to be promising if he can end up like a Roethlisberger that'd be fine in the beginning people were comparing him to uh Peyton Manning I was comparing him to Matt Ryan um, I guess you could say it still, but you know, Daniel Jones is a little bit more mo- mobile than those guys. Yeah, he's he doesn't really mind the personality of Ben Roethlisberger, but I could still I could still definitely uh, definitely see it in his uh, ability and yeah, everything that he has. And he, he Ben Roethlisberger replaced the starting quarterback Tomothy Maddox pretty quickly, even though the the quarterback was uh, I'm looking at the stats. He was two and one, fifty percent completions. He, he was just average, you know, um, average QBR and uh, passer rating, and it just wasn't good enough. So Ben Roethlisberger replaced him right away. And, yeah, uh, we'll see. Um, is Kyler Murray going to end up being like the Eli Manning? I don't know. But next, we're, let's mention the uh, the next quarterback taken in, in the NFL draft. Obviously, that was Dwayne Haskins. And he reminds me a lot of James Winston. Kind of personality issues from a big school, Florida State, Ohio State. Had some a little bit of success, uh, you know. Uh, James Winston played a little bit more. He had a little bit more year starting. So it's obviously not a direct comparison. They're both black. <laughs> just kidding. That doesn't have to do anything with anything. But, you know, um, they're, they're just... It also does. African-American quarterbacks, they're, they have the same kind of pressure on them to succeed. Uh, Dwayne Haskins fell to Washington, which is where he was born. James Winston's a Florida kid. You know, they're playing where they, where they belong. A little bit turnover happy. Uh, Dwayne Haskins had done a little bit of a better job. But they're both kind of stingy. They're both kind of that personality where it kind of rubs people the wrong way sometimes. And they're both fierce, obviously, competitors. Every Everybody's a fierce competitor in the NFL unless you're like Blake Bortles or something. I don't know. But, yeah, so that's my next QB comp. And finally, Gardner Minshew. He's the, he was drafted in like the sixth round, number 200-something overall. And he reminds me a lot of Patrick Mahomes. Now, obviously, I'm comparing their play styles. I'm not comparing their production here. Um, yeah, with with Daniel Jones and Ben Roethlisberger, I'm also kind of comparing their production as well. And with Kyler Murray, I think he can live up to a little bit of a Russell Wilson. But Garner Minshew, I don't think can. He's He likes to distribute to his, you know, receivers, and he does well like that. But he also is about himself. It's 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 his show. It's not, oh, um, I'm going to give it to my guys, DJ Chark, and do stuff. Sometimes he holds on to the ball a little bit too much, which a lot of QB, a lot of QBs do. Quarterbacks like Tom Brady, Eli Manning, they're sick and tired of getting hit, so they deliver the ball off quick. They're trying to make good impressions of the, the rookie quarterbacks are. So um, that's what happens. Ends up having Gardner Minshew. He ends up taking hits that he shouldn't. He ends up doing some one hand passes, no look passes, and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes is way more talented. He has a bigger arm. 
Um, yeah, I think he's way further in his development. But Gardner Minshew isn't that far behind if you think about it. It's just that um, he, he can't take his team over the top. And sometimes he's rubs people the wrong way in this organization. That's why they went back to Nick Foles. Nick Foles, John Filippo, that's what they're going to look for. Again, I still think the, the Jaguars should trade Gardner Minshew because he's worth to another team way more than he's worth to the Jaguars. You got to find out your, um, the other team's worth to you and then you're worth to the team. And yeah, so my next storyline, I want to talk about the Ravens a little bit. So the Ravens start off the season uh, with a banger. They beat the Miami Dolphins 51 to like 7 or 14. And people are like, oh, this is the next good team. And then the defense started to struggle. In fact, there was an article after their loss to the Browns, 40 to 24, 25, I believe, saying, oh, what happened to this defense? And obviously in the offseason, the narrative was, oh, we lost C.J. Mosley. We lost uh, Zadarius Smith. We lost Eric Weddle. You know, C.J. Mosley was the play caller on this defense. He was the leader. And if you lose your leader on defense, that's heartbreaking. You know, that happened uh, with the Seattle a couple years ago, and then they had a little bit of a down year. You know, once you lose your signal caller on defense, it's like you don't have your identity anymore. You don't have that guy. That's why, I mean, the Oakland Raiders, they're not great on defense anymore because Cleo Mack was the leader of that defense. Obviously, they're getting better now, but we're only see running down the line. And, you know, looking at the narratives, you're looking at some decent guys that weren't really performing. Obviously, Marlon Humphrey was uh, an elite, you know, he's, he's ranked their top uh, cornerback. Then you also had Justin Smith, who was hurt at the time, so he wasn't playing. And then Earl Thomas is just getting back into shape. I mean, he's coming off a broken leg, which is a lot. Um, you know, Tra- Taven Young, I think, is still out. You know, and there were, plus they drafted a couple of guys like Jalen Ferguson out of Louisiana, I believe. You know, he fell to them in the third round. And um, they were also playing without Brandon Williams. Uh, like a, a really, their number one pass rusher, pretty much. And now all those guys are back. They're healthy. They're getting some momentum, and their defensive coordinator is rallying the troops. You know, the defensive coordinator last year it was his first year, and he, you know, he 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 did really well because he had a bunch of talent like C.J. Mosley and a bunch of established talent. It's a different challenge now. You have a whole bunch of guys in your second year. You know, they they look to a combination of Patrick on on I forget how to pronounce the name. It's like Patrick on uh Kenny Young and Chris Board. You know, they they're looking to they're looking to take over C.J. Mosley's job, which isn't great. You know, it's it's not an ideal situation. And those guys have really stepped up as we uh, headed into the season. You know, Matt Matt Judd and Tyus Bowser aren't good enough for this team to succeed. You know, you needed you needed a guy to step up, and you know, the pass rushers right now are really playing well and that's why they beat Houston that much uh you know all you have to do is rattle the the quarterback and all of a sudden you look great and yeah so that's pretty much the the gist of it now obviously the Ravens if looking at the rest of their schedule they can potentially win the number one seed which I wasn't expecting in the beginning of the season I had them at seven and nine and not making the playoffs obviously because seven and nine is a pretty bad record this week if they beat the Rams with the Rams maybe maybe they're looking at a hot streak I don't know but they obviously don't trust Jared Goff and at this offensive line. So they're going to get off the ball. They're going to run with Zeke a lot. I mean, Zeke, uh, Todd Gurley a lot. Zeke and Todd Gurley are pretty much the same guy right now. Uh, they're straight line guys. You don't really have that cut or burst anymore. And I wonder what's going to happen with Saquon Barkley. And then after, they have a tough two-game stretch. They play the, the 49ers at home. And they're not really um, that good at home. But recently they have been as they, they've gotten hotter. But the, after the 49ers, they play the Bills, the Jets, the Browns, and the Steelers. And the key game um, I have is against the 49ers. If they can win that game, they'll fi- officially the- establish themselves as the best team in the league. The Patriots have a, a tough uh, game stretch, but the 49ers have an amazing defense. There's two storylines I'm looking at. 49ers coordinator Sala. I think it's DJ Sala, but I don't want to say. It doesn't sound right. But um, Sala, the, the 49ers defensive coordinator, is he able to rattle uh, Lamar Jackson? You know, the, obviously the, um, the 49ers have um, John Harbaugh. I mean, <laughs> the Ravens and the 49ers are uh, pretty much rivals. Not rivals at this point, but you had the Jim and John Harbaugh thing. Then you had the uh, offensive coordinator for the 49ers go to the Ravens. Is there a little bit of a connection there? I don't know. But uh, I think that if Lamar Jackson can dissect this defense in the 49ers, and then in turn, if the Ravens can get enough pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo with all their pressure, and if Marlon Humphreys can cover 
uh, one of you know anybody on the 49ers if if um obviously uh, George Kittle will be guarded by a tight end but you know if if one of the 49ers whoever you want to say Debo Samuel who's not really playing that well you know if one of those guys can be guarded you take them out of the game and that's pretty much it and these guys have been successful you know recently coming down the stretch and obviously it helps from the guys who have came back but Tyus Howard had a uh, had two sacks I believe against uh, Deshaun Watson then you had uh, Jalen Ferguson and um, who, who else contributed for that? I think Matt Judden was there too, you know, for, for that uh, for that sack in um, against Deshaun Watson as well. So these guys are coming up into shape. They can get some momentum behind their uh, new defensive coordinator, somewhat new, whatever defensive coordinator. And they're if they could get this defense healthy on down the stretch, I don't want to play them. You know, the the main story in the beginning of the year was, oh, can this defense come up into shape? And I had questions, a lot of questions about them. I said they're going to be like the Rams with a you know bad defense, but their linebackers have proven to be really strong. They have a lot of depth there, um, in their you know inside outside linebacker position, and yeah. So the main thing is they need their number one guy again. They have they need a guy to step up. I don't think uh, they really had a guy to replace C.J. Mosley and or Eric Weddle, Eric Weddle, but you know uh, it seems like every single time these players come out, new players come in. Obviously they lost. Um, the guy who went to Arizona Cardinals. I'm blanking on his name. I always blank on people's names. But, um, yeah, they, they obviously lost a bunch of players in the offseason. And, you know, they, they've done pretty well. But anyway, so I want to move on to my next storyline. Okay, so my third storyline is the Jaguars. And uh, Gardner Minshew, who I mentioned earlier, and I compared him to Patrick Mahomes. I compare their play styles to Patrick Mahomes, not their ceiling. And I think that the Jaguars are committed to Nick Foles. They invested like $50 million, $22 million a year in him, and they're not going to get rid of him for another two years. And they're not going to trade him to anybody. Who's looking for Nick Foles? Maybe Andy Reid gets Nick Foles as the backup again, but he'd be wasted talent. I'm not paying $22 million for a backup. Uh, same thing with the Eagles. They, they got rid of him. So who's going to want Nick Foles? Maybe a, a Matt Nagy who... Well, actually, that's a pretty good idea. I'm thinking about it. Matt Nagy, uh, he's in the Andy Reid coaching tree, if you don't know. And, yeah, so that may be interesting. But Nick Foles, really? Is that really going to is that really gonna hype your team up that much? Uh, is that really going to make it? I mean, people say that the Bears are the 28, uh, 2018 version of the Jaguars, or 2019 version of the 2018 Jaguars, but whatever. Um, you know, Garner Minshew is a waste of talent on this team. And I think that... Unlike Nick Foles, he has value to other teams. He can go to a Los Angeles Chargers. He can even go to a Chicago Bears, and he'll be way more value than he is against the uh, uh, with the Jaguars. You know, the um, they don't really like in the Jacksonville community or Jacksonville front office. Tom Coughlin doesn't like that sort of guy. He doesn't like a guy who's making all these plays. You get the good with the bad. You know, they, you want Gardner Minshew to be Gardner Minshew, but also it's like, come on, you know, you're holding on to the ball a little bit too long, which rookies do. And he kind of rubs people the wrong way there. You know, Cam, Cam Robinson is a great left tackle. They have a great offensive line. And I think Nick Foles can stick behind there and be the quarterback there for the next two years. And if he doesn't work, they'll just start off and draft somebody else. You know, Gardner Minshew, they found that guy. And they can, I think they can get him for a second rounder. The Chargers, the Bears are looking for a guy. The Redskins maybe because they always have like, it feels like they always have smart offensive coordinators coming up in the, um, in, down the pipeline. You know, so there's always that. Um, as far as the Jaguars, what they should do, I didn't really do a midseason recap, but they, they're average at everything. Average at rushing, average at pass defense, average pretty much all around the board. So they're not legit at anything. Obviously, the, the loss to the, of their linebacker, Telvin Smith, I believe, before the season um, was awful. And recently, after the Jalen Ramsey trade, they only had one stinker on, um, on defense. They only had one stinker in the corners on defense, and that was against the Cincinnati Bengals, who had Andy Dalton at the time, who was like leading the league in passing. And obviously, that's not going to be good for you when, um, yeah, it's not going to be good for your, your team when you play a, a pretty good pass offense and you just lose your top corner. You kind of lose a bit of, of um, you know, a little bit of sauce that game, but they still won, I believe. Uh, now, you have A.J. Boye, obviously, but you have Breon Borders, D.J. Hayden, Trey Herndon, Tay Hayes, and Brandon Watson for the rest of your uh, cornerbacks on this team. So, it's not, they're not world beaters, but now you have a lot of draft talent that you've gotten from years and years. You got rid of um, like Dante Fowler Jr. last year, but you, now you have Josh Allen, who's playing great as, at your linebacker position, who pretty much did the same thing Calvin Smith would have done. You have uh, Donald Payne, um, 
you, you have, oh, what's it now? Taven Bryan, who they drafted out of Florida. They drafted a lot of players out of Florida. You have Ja'Kai Polite, Taven Bryan, um, what do you call it? Uh, Dante Fowler Jr. But anyway, so you have a lot of young talent on this defense. So now I think in the draft, you have two first round picks. You have the Rams' first round pick and your own. So the Rams are going to be around 20. You're, I think C, uh, not CD, like maybe CD Lamb falls there. Uh, Rugs falls there. You get an elite, a pat, um, you know, a elite wide receiver for Nick Foles to throw to. Maybe you get a, a great tight end. Obviously, we're going to talk about more about the draft prospects later. And then you get a nice right tackle. You get a nice guard. They replace, you know, Ja'Kai Polite, create depth on this offensive line to keep the uh, Nick Foles upright. And that's why he succeeded. You know, Leonard Fournette, he's done better in the past. He's done better in, in recent, um, well, the recent weeks. Last year, he was pretty bad. I think he struggled over the past couple weeks. I'm not quite sure about that. But, you know, he, he has to be your running back of the future for the next couple of years. Obviously, you draft a, you know, a running back later in the rounds to get some depth, get your... Um, get your secondary back later in the rounds. That's what you know the Seahawks did, and end up getting their franchise running back. So you you always want to draft running backs, you know, because there's always a guy from a low school that not not really scouted who just works hard and gets in the league. You're gonna have your Antonio Browns and stuff. So I wouldn't draft a, a wide receiver with your first pick unless it's a CD Lamb, unless it's like an elite elite guy. And even then, I mean, has Odell really worked out? I mean, he was he was a great talent, yes, but. You know, these guys get injured. And these guys, uh, their best asset is their health. And uh, once they're not healthy. So, you know, that, that can go with any position. But I, I think the Jaguars are in a really good position. You look at this division, Houston Texans. They dra- they spent a lot of stock in a left tackle and a wide receiver. That's what they did. And they spent two first-round draft picks on it against guys that I guess are all right. But... You know, I guess I'm, I guess I'm, that's what I'm saying for the Jaguars to do. But, you know, Houston Texans don't have a lot of draft picks. Um, you know, they obviously, I think they have the Jadavian Clowney one from Seattle. But, you know, uh, I, I don't think I don't think the Houston Texans are in a great position here. I think they leveraged their future just for a couple of guys. Like, uh, their offensive line is eh. But we'll see how they develop. It all depends on the pieces develop, really. That, that's, that's what it comes down to. Whoever wins the trade is whether the pieces that you draft can develop. Obviously, it's working out for the Oakland Raiders well. We'll see if it works out for the Jaguars as well. I think it was a good trade to get rid of Jalen Ramsey. The bridge was broken, and they got two first-rounders for him. And the, you see what the Rams are doing now. They're, they're sputtering a little bit. And we don't know what they're going to do. So, obviously, to recap, uh, trade Garner Minshew because he's not, he's not really worth a lot to your team. He's be worth more to another team. They have developing pieces in Taven Bryan um, that, that they drafted from a few years ago. And they have... They have some assets this year that should go surround Nick Foles, commit to him. You already committed to him. Let's make a run for it. And if it doesn't work, hey, you get another. Uh, you, you're going to have a high draft pick, and you'll draft your guy for the future, and then you already have uh, pieces for him to succeed. And, yeah, so that's pretty much my recap of the Jaguars. Let me know what you guys think. Can they win the AFC South next year? I had them winning it this year. I think it's a little bit too far out of the reach now, but obviously it's tight. You know, Houston Texans won yesterday, but... Um, well, then again, they would have still been the same amount of games behind. Yeah, so let me know, and let's move on to my next segment. All right, welcome to the final segment. We do it every week, besides um, when I went 0-5. Last week, we went 1-4, and so we didn't really improve. We didn't really do that much better, but we were close. We were close in some games. But uh, yeah, this, this is basically the series where I give you my best bets, and you guys choose to bet or not. Um, AKA whatever I bet, you should probably bet the opposite. <laughs> I'm giving you like my best bets. Just whatever I say, just do the opposite. It's simple. But no, no, we're gonna go five and zero this week, guaranteed. I, no, I'm, just kidding. I'm not promising anything. Um, I'm not sure if that's like a legal thing. But anyway, so uh, my first best bet is San Francisco Green Bay, where I'm taking Green Bay plus three. Now, what this line is telling you is that they're even teams, and right now I think that the Green Bay Packers are the worst team. I think they're the worst team, but I'm going against. That and I'm saying, you know what, Green Bay Packers. What do they do well? They have uh, they have an amazing run game. The 49ers, they've been able to stop the run game, but they have their asset in Aaron Rodgers. Yes, Devonte Adams is finally healthy. They have a couple of guys that you can't even pronounce. The guy uh, Aaron Rodgers said, "Oh, put number ten in." Famously, he's like, "Put number ten in, uh, eleven in." They're off a bye. They're going strong, and the Green Bay Packers. I think they this is their game. Prime time. 
They rock in prime time. The the 49ers have struggled against quarterbacks who can move a little bit. Green Bay's offensive line, I think, is going to be able to counteract 49ers' defensive line. They're strong. They're healthy. They're going into this game with a game plan, and I think they're going to execute. I take the over as well. I'm taking Green Bay plus three against the 49ers in prime time game Monday. Was that Monday night or Sunday night? I think that's Sunday night. Uh, next, Dallas Cowboys at Patriots. I'm taking the Dallas Cowboys to win this game. I'm taking the Dallas Cowboys to beat the Patriots. There's always that There's always that game. The team shows up. This is the Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl. People are talking about Jason Garrett. Their backs are against the wall here. They, oh, you barely beat the Lions. You, you, know, you beat the Redskins, Giants, Dolphins. Are you kidding me? That sort of thing. You know, you lost to the Jets. You, but you lose to the, you know. That's the same thing happened last year when Dallas Cowboys played the Saints. The, the, the Saints were 9-1 and one or 8-1. and one. The Dallas Cowboys were playing at home. I, I get it. But they had an amazing game against the, the, um, the Saints. And they were able to win a low-scoring game. I think this is going to be a low-scoring affair. I take the under in this game, and I take the 6.5 points in Dallas. It's a tough. It's just a touchdown. So at the end of the game, a touchdown can ruin something. I like them to win, so I'm definitely taking the 6.5 points. They're going to be able to establish the run game. The Patriots have struggled with the run game this year. If they can get Ezekiel Elliott just to pound the ball, pound the rock, pound the rock, pound the rock against his team. Dak Prescott's able to um, read better. He, could, he, he knows what the Patriots are doing. This is a giant test for him. You know, he's been giving audibles this year. Is, is, he, is he that smart? Is Kel, um, Kellen Moore teaching him enough? Or is Bill Belichick going to outsmart them and they're going to think that they can do it and they're going to see looks that they've never seen before? Because... Bill Belichick, I think, is going to throw the kitchen sink against them. You know, with the Ravens, you may have not wanted to show much, but they're going to, show, they're going to throw the kitchen sink at Dallas. The Patriots are getting healthy. They know their offense is in shambles. I think the defense is going to come to play. You know, um, not Dexter Lawrence, Demarcus Lawrence. He, he's going to come to play. He's been the, their best player. Jalen Smith is playing good. Sean, even Sean Lee is playing well. Um, their corners are eh, but I, I still think the Dallas Cowboys win this game uh, by a score of 17 to 14 New York Giants style I'm taking the New York Jets plus three against the Oakland Raiders okay the Jets obviously everyone knows they stopped the run well but the Oakland Raiders are traveling all the way to the Jets I, I lean Jets obviously these are my best bets but there aren't too many teams there's not too many games this this week that have full of my conviction this is my least uh, optimistic pick here, you know, uh, but the the Oakland Raiders defense sucks. They only beat the the Bengals 17 to 10. Are they slowing down a little bit? You know, the Bengals are apparently are tanking and you only beat them at seven points at home. You know, you're supposed to, you, the line was 13 points in this game. So obviously you underperformed and now they're traveling all the way over to the Jets. They're used to traveling, um, but they got a little bit of rest at home. Now they're like, okay, we're I think they're going to be a little bit out of it, and I think the Jets catch them uh, sleeping 21 to, actually, no, probably more like 27 to uh, 25 or 26. I don't know how the Raiders would get to 25, but I think the Jets win this game, and it's because of the Jets' run defense, and it's because now they have a little bit of momentum. You have Jamal Adams saying, you know, I'm the best, I'm the best. They're they're feeling a little bit confident about themselves, but the Jets are going to soon fall flat on their face, but I think they take this game. The Oakland Raiders are going to look past this game because they're like, next week we play the Chiefs, and they're going to lose that game as well because the Chiefs are going to be well-rested and they're well-coached. But you never know with the Raiders, you know. It's one of those things. I could be completely wrong, but I'm going to lean the Jets. I'm taking the three points, and I'm taking the Jets to win as an underdog. Okay, next to Cleveland Brown versus Miami Dolphins. Obviously, Cleveland Browns are playing without Miles Garrett. That's a big deal. Well, I don't think it's a huge deal, but what the big deal is is they may be playing without Olivier Vernon, which means they're going to have no pass rush. But the Dolphins' offensive line, come on. Come on. And the Dolphins have lost a lot of playmakers. They haven't really been playing with a bunch of guys this year, so it's not like they're losing Eldell Beckham or they're not losing DeAndre Hopkins. They're losing the guy that they picked up from the street, but... They're starting to get banged up. I, I think that they're, they're right now, all they needed was their couple of wins against the, the Colts and the Jets. And now they're just going to be like, you know what, we're riding high. And the, the Cleveland Browns, need, they, they're feisty right now. They're like, everyone hates us now. They have that mentality. So they're going to look to run Miami Dolphins out of the building. I don't think they're going to be fine with a three-point win. I think this is one of those games where it's just like they pound and pound and pound. Baker Mayfield's going to have an amazing game. He may throw a pick or two. 
But, you know, the, the Cleveland Browns are going to win this game 30-13. to 13. It's going to be a rout. Um, what's the over-under in this game? Let me check real quick. Um, the over-under in this game is 45. I said 30-13. to 13. Uh, I'm staying away from this game because uh, you never know with Ryan Fitzpatrick what he's going to do. Um, he's going to, like, perform some magic. But, yeah, and Ryan Fitzpatrick has been a top-10 quarterback for the past couple weeks. So a lot of people forget that. He's been a top-rated quarterback. But the the, um, the Browns are motivated. Sheldon Richardson, Denzel Ward, I think, is starting to get healthy. Uh, I could be completely wrong about that. But, you know, Cleveland Browns, minus 10 and a half against the Miami Dolphins. Um, that's a 1 o'clock game in Cleveland. It's going to be cold. It's going to be very cold. Miami, they're not used to playing in the cold. They're, they're a fair weather team. Even Ryan Fitzpatrick, he played at Harvard, I guess. But he's played in Tampa. He's played in Miami over the past couple years. So, is he used to playing in the cold? I don't think so. He played for the Jets, but... Um, yeah, this, this team is playing in the cold. Clean bounds are um, right where they, uh, they like them. And finally, my best bet, I have the Cincinnati, Cincinnati Bengals plus 6.5. They covered last week. And what this line is telling me is that Pittsburgh would be, be favored 12 at home. Pittsburgh has an amazing defense, but they have a shaky offense. Mom Pouncey is now out. They, they're not going to have a great offensive line. Um, they have good coaches on the offensive line, but Juju Smith-Schuster is out. A lot of the wide receivers are out. And, yeah, um, A.J. Green's not going to be playing, but the Bengals are used to that. Ryan Finley's ha- going to have to have a good game here, you know, somewhere, right? They scored 10 games last week. Oh, 10, 10 games. Scored 10 points last week, 13 points in their first week. If the, if the uh, Bengals are good for 13 points, I know Pittsburgh is a better defense. But they showed their flaws last week against the Browns. You know, they're up 21 to the Browns. So let's say Bengals score 13. And do, you th- do I think the Steelers can get to 20? I'm not confident in that. I'm definitely not confident in that. And plus, Mason Rudolph is a little bit banged up. He's a little, maybe a little bit cloudy. Maybe he forgets some plays. And obviously, he doesn't have the weapons that he's used to. I can see the Bengals making some plays on defense. You still have decent players on this defense. You still have Geno Atkins, um, B.J. Goodson. Uh, they have a really good corner, I think. Yeah, so I, I think that the Bengals, six and a half points at home, I'm taking those points. Um, and, you know, they, they played in Oakland last week, so it's a little bit of a far travel. The Steelers played in also in Ohio last week, so they're not really traveling that far. And you could say that they're going to be mad, but it's against Cincinnati Bengals. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're, we're worried. They're going to be worried about the game against Cleveland next week to get revenge on them. Uh, Pouncey's not even going to be there for that game. That would have been amazing if he was there, but whatever. No, those are my best bets. So uh, I obviously have it on the screen. I'm not going to recap because I, I forget all my picks. And obviously, I had Dallas. I had Green Bay. I had uh, Bengals, which isn't a great pick, but I also had the Jets. And I had the um, Cleveland Browns. So, yeah. I hope you guys did enjoy this edition of being a sports talk. Make sure to subscribe if you're listening on BNA Sports Podcast. Make sure to check out my YouTube channel. I'm trying to expand a little bit, trying to do some Giants talk, trying to do some NFL talk. Um, I'm trying to do a little more research into videos so I'm a little bit more informed about my positions because I bet you I just talk about stuff so much. I come in like ebbs and flows. Sometimes I'm like, I just want to get up and talk about sports. Other times I'm like, I want to do a little more research, have a little bit more thought behind my opinion. And yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. More content obviously is in the future. I'm coming up with a scripted video. Um, I think next week I'm going to finish my series on Sam Darnold, a.k.a. I'm going to do part two. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Look out for all the content. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to leave you with probably my favorite song. I love listening to this song. It's called All That by, I don't know, but it sounds good. It's one of those songs that you find on free music. But let's just start the music and end this show and have the rest of the good rest of your day. Bye, guys.